Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. Each year I spend a lot of time hiking and climbing in Switzerland. One of my favorite places to go is Sass Fay. It's a little village deep in the heart of the Swiss Alps and the canton of Valais, not far from the Italian border. Here I've had the opportunity on climbs and hikes to observe the Alpine Ibex. It's locally known as the Steinbach. The Alpine Ibex is an amazing nimble mountain goat with incredible adaptations to survival in the barren and steep, rocky high elevation alpine environment. And they've made a comeback from the absolute brink of extinction. This episode today is about the amazing Alpine Ibex, its incredible adaptations, and how it went from being nearly extrapolated in Switzerland in most of the Alps and has returned to the point where it's no longer endangered. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. Today, there are six recognized species of ibex in the genus Capra that are native to Eurasia, North Africa, and East Africa. This episode is about the alpine ibex, Capra ibex, who today is found in France, Bulgaria, Austria, Switzerland, Italy, Germany, and Slovenia, and particularly, of course, in the very highest of the alpine regions. They can be recognized by their strong, powerful body, their thick fur, and the recurved horns that both males and females will have. The ibex horns form at birth and grow throughout their lifetime. The males, which are larger and heavier than the females, have larger recurved horns than the females, and these horns on the males will grow larger and faster. Both the males and the females have these characteristic recurved horns that are defined by knobby rings and make them distinct from other organisms. The males may grow up to 150 pounds in weight. The horns are important not only as a defense from predators, but they define the reproductive males which win their status in a herd by dramatic fights with other males. The male horns can reach over 3 feet in length, while the female horns usually max out around 12 inches. I recall running into a group of 3 or 4 large male ibex on a trail behind the eiger heading to the Shrekhorn hut. I assure you I was very cautious and respectful of their presence. Though they meant me no harm, the trail was narrow with limited footing. And while I'm sure I'd have been okay, I would, did take my time and let them move off as I stayed on my course. In the summers, the ibex live in the very highest of the rocky alpine environments, where to me, it hardly seems like there's enough vegetation for them to survive. I believe part of the reason for their adaptation to this high environment is to be far from predators and to feed an environment with minimal threat of being eaten. So they occupy a very unique niche. In the summer, they can be found as high as 10 to 12,000 feet above sea level in these rocky alpine environments. They seem to climb effortlessly, and they have nimble muscular frames and extraordinary balance, and they can jump as much as six vertical feet from a standing start. In today's world of social media, Instagram, TikTok, and yes, YouTube shorts, you might know the Alpine Ibex best as the crazy goats that are seen on practically vertical dam faces. They go to the faces of these dams in search of minerals, including sodium and calcium. These Minerals will leach from the rock surfaces and precipitate, and the goats are drawn to these dam surfaces to lick the minerals that are limiting factors in their high alpine environment. Their extraordinary climbing abilities are also tied to their cloved hooves meaning they have two toes on each foot. These toes are unique in the fact that on the outside, they're very hard and strong, but on the inside, they're soft and almost rubber-like. More than that, each of the two parts of the hoof can be moved independent, and the soft internal parts manipulated with almost like a suction cup-like effect. With these extraordinary, uniquely specialized hooves, they can perch in a climb in extraordinary places. 
By the 1800s, alpine ibex were extrapidated from their original range. A pair of ibex horns were rare and greatly valued and motivated poachers to continue to find and harvest these alpine ibex. With the population reduced to 0.1% of its original population, there are estimated to be only 50 to 100 left in northern Italy. Under ordinary circumstances, the ibex would have been completely eliminated and would be another animal on our list of extinct organisms. However, King Victor Emmanuel II of Italy, who was a hunter himself, intervened in dramatic fashion by creating a private hunting reserve, especially for the king, and had the forethought to actually pay the poachers to guard them and instead of hunting them. Under the protection of the king, the herd of a hundred or so remaining ibex grew to over 3,000 by 1914. Not long after this, the king donated the land to the state, and in 1922, the amazing scenic area became the Gran Paradiso National Park, and in fact, it is Italy's first national park. From this zone in the Gran Paradiso, the ibex spread back across its original range in the Alps by natural migration as well as managed introductions. Today there's an estimated 50,000 ibex living in the Alps through seven different European countries. While the ibex no longer has threatened species status, one should keep in mind that the population is in a state defined as breeding depression. In this state, it has reduced genetic diversity because, remember, it came from a population that was down to only 100. So we lost a lot of that DNA diversity. And populations like this are generally recognized as having reduced biological fitness. In fact, recently, the reduced survival of newborn ibex has been linked to earlier and earlier growing seasons, which are linked to the change in the climate in these alpine areas. Alpine areas seem to suffer more and greater average temperature climate change than other places in the world. This can be dramatically observed in Switzerland, where they've lost 10% of their glacier mass in just the last two years. The ibex is truly an amazing, iconic organism of the European Alps, and I hope that one day you'll have the opportunity to see them. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door, and remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, and turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.